。負けちゃう。ガッツ。Gojo, the strongest sorcerer in modern day, as no other sorcerer or even curse has a chance overcoming him. Gojo has reached the pinnacle of strength. Thanks to the limitless curse technique, specifically his infinity, which makes him completely untouchable and even immune to all forms of harm, the infinity works by creating infinite distance between himself and the outside world. When an attack is launched at Gojo, they'll hit his infinity barrier and they'll stop in their tracks. The attack itself is still moving towards Gojo, but since there's infinite space between Gojo and the attack, they'll seem as if they stop moving, eventually falling or dissipating. Gojo accomplishes the barrier by dividing space, similar to Achilles and the tortoise. Because in the Infinity, there's common belief that Gojo has one of the strongest defensive abilities in fiction. <laughs> However, as Sukuna has proved, there are direct counters to his abilities, and in general, something being infinite doesn't mean they are invincible, as proven by our own world. I usually don't hold grudges against certain characters, but today I was approached by the KGA, otherwise known as the Kill Gojo Association, and they've offered me 500 V bucks to kill Gojo. Luckily, they have allowed me to summon one character with the ability to bypass infinity, and today we'll be picking out a list of 28 characters that have the best shot at beating him. Now, before we start, the KGA has created some conditions for me to follow. One, the character can't be omnipotent, meaning I can't use characters like Hari Suzumiya or Bruce Almighty or the One Above All. And second, even if the character can bypass infinity, they have to be able to beat Gojo in a battle of hands. So with that said, let's kill Gojo. From now on, you will speak only when spoken to, and the first and last words out of your filthy sewers will be "Sir." Do you maggots understand that? Sir, yes, sir. Reed Astria as the former sword saint of Lukunaka, and pretty much stood at the pinnacle of power in the Rezero world before Reinhardt's birth. As his title implies, he's incredibly proficient and powerful with the sword, to the point where he can defeat Reinhardt in a serious sword battle with a mere swing he can one-shot dragons. But this isn't why Reed can bypass infinity. No, it's because Reed has the ability to cut through concepts and invisible forces. For example, when he slices through Subaru's unseen hand, which could not be detected or seen by the naked eye. The author of ReZero has stated that Reed can be head Regulus Corneus, a character who, just like Gojo, is completely immune to all forms of damage by stopping the time of his body, removing himself from the world's influence. This implies that Reed can already bypass powerful defensive abilities simply by cutting through them. Similar to Reed Astria, Captain Yami is also incredibly skilled with the sword. However, when combined with his dark magic, he becomes even more formidable. His dark magic allows him to destroy entire cities with a single swing of his sword. Judging from the fact that he scales with Jack, who could create an entire crater with ease, it's safe to say that Yami has the power to destroy an entire continents. He becomes even more impressive with his speed, casually reacting to beams of light. And this is a Yami at the beginning of the series. He's even stronger in the current arc. His physical stats are definitely worthy of giving Gojo a tough time. But where the smoking gun really lies is his ultimate attack. The Dimension Slash. By coating his katana in dark magic, Yami is able to send out a flying slash that cuts through everything, including concepts. He used his ability to cut through and destroy Dorothy's dream magic, which conjures an entire universe. And as we know, universes contain many concepts like infinity and are infinitely spanning. Gojo will be a cakewalk for the captain of the Black Bulls. Asta possesses anti magic. A supernatural energy that nullifies it cuts through magic. The energy is incredibly versatile. It can be infused into many weapons, such as a sword that reflects attacks. Anti magic has a variety of applications, but some of the most noteworthy is its power to massively increase physical stats, allowing Asta to react to light, cut mountain-sized beings in half, and defeat world-ending threats. Gojo would almost have no way of defeating Asta due to him having massively higher stats, and the fact that anti magic can nullify the infinity and other applications of his technique. 
the Imagine Breaker exists within the right hand of Kamijo Toma, and has the power to negate and destroy any supernatural force it touches. Despite it being restricted to the right hand, it comes in handy in certain situations, such as when he passively resisted reality manipulation on several occasions. The Imagine Breaker can nullify universal levels of power, so it's highly unlikely that Gojo could overcome it. However, unlike Asta, Toma's physical stats would not be enough to survive Gojo's godly hands. But this all ceases to matter if Gojo happens to remove or even mutilate Toma's right hand. You see, the right hand of Kamijo Toma doesn't just hold the Imagine Breaker, but an entire zoo of entities, some of which can destroy the entire world as we know it and manipulate aspects of reality. He, for example, has a dragon that can control all forms of matter, called the Dragon King. Or how about the fish eggs that no diff the reality destroying entity and gave them PTSD? If Toma's right hand were to come off in the presence of Gojo, I'd hate to see what monstrosity would be unleashed upon him. Predator is an inability of Rihan, and it revolves around creating the perfect counter to his opponent's ability. When Rihan chooses a target and activates his an ability, Predator begins to grow inside his body. The more precise his awareness of the target's skill, the better the Predator will be able to counter it, figuratively turning it into its natural Predator. So against Gojo, Rihan can conjure an end beast with a direct counter to the infinity in Gojo's skill set. The Phantom Thieves are the main characters of Persona 5, and they use their personas to enter the metaverse and steal the distorted desires of corrupt individuals to change their hearts. So they basically mind control their targets. The metaverse can bypass the infinity because it doesn't require the Phantom Thieves to make contact with Gojo. Gojo's massive ego definitely makes him a candidate for having his own palace, and if he does, the Phantom Thieves can infiltrate it, kill his shadow, and force him to have a mental shutdown. I know, I know, the Phantom Thieves don't kill people, but shut up. This is my video, not yours. The Flash is a character that has run ludicrous speeds several times in the past. He's time-traveled, run across the universe in less than a second, and destroyed space-time on many occasions. I'm not saying he'd outrun infinity, but I am saying he traveled back in time and off Gojo as a child. Rimuru Tempest has a variety of abilities, some of which have the power to potentially destroy the entire continent. He's also very skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat, possessing incredibly high physical stats. However, what Gojo needs to look out for is Rimuru's two skills, space-time domination and Azatoth. The first is pretty self-explanatory. Rimuru has full control over time and space, which Gojo utilizes. The second, Azatoth, is a special attack which can devour the target's soul, ignoring space-time at the same time. Kumagawa's All Fiction has the power to erase anything from reality by turning them into fiction. He's erased color from the universe, his injuries, his own death, eyesight, humans, and concepts. I think you understand what I'm hinting at. He'd use all fiction to erase Gojo from existence, or turn his cursed energy into fiction, allowing him to hit Gojo with Bookmaker, nerfing Gojo to his level in every way in terms of speed, intellect, and talent. Gilgamesh's Gates of Babylon contain every man-made item ever created from the past, present, and distant future. This includes noble phantasms, all of which have unique abilities, some of which can bend reality itself. While there are plenty of power nullification and space-cutting noble phantasms in his arsenal, Gilgamesh will most likely utilize Ea, a divine weapon that unleashes cosmic wind, capable of ripping apart space and time, which is also capable of destroying the world. Not even Unlimited Void would have a chance to activate, as Ea can destroy dimensions almost infinite in size. God exists, and he's American. Dr. Manhattan can control all forms of matter with simply a swipe of his hand. He exists in a higher spatial dimension and sees the universe like a cog in a massive machine. But because of this, he can live in the past, present, and future all at once, teleport, control time, travel through dimensions, and dismantle concepts with a thought. All it would take is a simple point of his finger to tear apart the infinity and one-shot Gojo in less than a second. Soft and wet 
that go beyond can fire out a bubble made of spinning lines. The lines spin so fast that the bubbles don't exist, and thus they ignore all physical and non-physical laws. To the point where a stand that manipulates the logic and reason of the world cannot stop it. Go Beyond will be aimed at Gojo's head, ignore the infinity and disintegrate Gojo on contact. The plunder bubbles can also steal Gojo's cursed energy from a distance, depriving Gojo of all its benefits, including his enhanced physical stats, giving Gappy a fighting chance. The mystic eyes of death can see lines on every physical and non-physical object in the universe. These lines are the physical manifestation of an object's end, and once Shiki Ryogi or Shiki Tono trace these lines, the objects they belong to will be severed and fall apart. The lines have been observed in abilities and even concepts like space, so it's likely that the infinity would also have lines of death. And once they are severed, Gojo would have his ability nullified. That's not all. Gojo's cursed energy would also have lines of death. And as long as Shiki can sever it, Gojo will be unable to use red, blue, purple, or unlimited void. Accelerator can control the concept of vectors, which is any quantity that has both magnitude and direction. In other words, it can control anything that moves from point A to point B with magnitude, which is pretty much everything in existence. Since everything abides by the laws of vectors, including supernatural forces, then basically it's the physical embodiment of the concept of physics. With this ability, Accelerator can simply wait for Gojo to run out of crystal energy and either destroy him right there and then, or stop the rotation of the entire planet, turning the Honored One into Honored Gum under my shoe. Wonder of You can control the concept of Calamity basically making the world itself into its weapon. Everything in existence from mundane objects, animals, vehicles, people, and even concepts will begin attacking you relentlessly until you're dead. Just like Final Destination, if it was a person. Wonder if you basically controls everything in existence, meaning not even Gojo can escape it, as the air itself can prove to be fatal. Superman is obviously incredibly powerful in terms of speed, strength, and sheer amount of abilities. However, the character has often dealt with the concept of infinity and overcome it. He's lifted a book with infinite pages, broke through the bonds of infinity. Superman one shot the Anti Monitor, a god who was a threat to infinite universes. All it takes is a casual punch from Superman to rip through the infinity and one shot Gojo. Cosmic Figaro understands the nature and behavior of every force and concept in the universe, which would include cursed energy and the concept of infinity. Cosmic Garo would copy and replicate any technique like domain and amplification in order to bypass infinity and destroy Gojo with all life eradication fist and his life speed movement. Gojo was once a kid. Kids like pizza. They also like animals, so it's not unlikely that Kid Gojo would go to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Michael Afton, aka the purple guy, would attract Gojo into the back room, who wouldn't be alarmed because of the cute costume. The purple guy would then do purple guy things to Gojo and stuff Gojo into Freddy Fazbear, or more like Fred Toru Gobear. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Arcoid Brunstad is a true ancestor with many vampiric abilities, such as enhanced physical stats, claws, and a taste for blood. Her rank as a true ancestor gives her three abilities in particular. The first is the Mystic Eyes of Enchantment, which paralyzes anyone who looks at them in fear. The second is Backup from the Planet. Basically, she'll automatically scale with the person she's fighting in terms of physical stats. The third is her Marvel Phantasm, a castle-like environment that lets her control everything within it. Basically, she's a god within this space and can do a variety of things like trapping foes in a pocket space and then eviscerating them. Man, I wish that were me. Batman where prep time is basically Kenjaku, just 30 times more effective. Bro took down the entire Justice League, some of which can destroy the entire solar system. Gojo would be cooked. <laughs> 
Just write Gojo's name in the Death Note. Kenpachi can cut through space, and even said he can cut through anything. The cautious hero got on a massive training arc while learning 500 different ways to defeat Gojo. The SCP Foundation is an organization dedicated to managing anomalous entities, objects, and phenomena to safeguard humanity. These anomalies, often referred to as SCPs, possess abnormal properties and abilities that defy the laws of nature. Some SCPs are death incarnate, others have infinite speed, and some are just… weird. So if Gojo were to be dropped into the SCP Foundation, he'd have a hard time dealing with some reality bending SCPs and would most likely get demolished by a large number of them, such as SCP-096 who would relentlessly chase Gojo until he runs out of cursed energy. Thanos has the Infinity Gauntlet, which possesses reality-bending rocks called the Infinity Stones or the Infinity Gems. Each can control different aspects of existence, like the Reality Stone and the Time Stone. With the Infinity Gauntlet, Thanos could easily demolish Gojo, especially with the Space Stone. It started when an alien device did what it did. It stuck itself upon his wrist, the secrets that it hid. Now he's got superpowers, he's no ordinary kid. He's been 10. So if you see him, you might be in for a big surprise. He'll turn into an alien before your very eyes. He's slimy, creepy, fast, and strong. He's every shape and size, and he has Alien X, who can manipulate reality and tank existence erasure. Now that we've established all 28 candidates that can kill Gojo, I think I'm gonna go for Superman. He's probably the nicest dude on this entire list, who isn't going to kill a bunch of innocent people on accident or be too prideful to listen to me. Sure, he's not going to kill Gojo like it was requested, but he'll at least seal him away forever with a Phantom Zone projector. Anyways, who would you guys pick to kill Gojo? Make sure to tell me in the comments so I can show it to upper management.